I want to welcome my cousin Ed Walsh, and uh, yeah, and his son Ed and his wife Kim, and they have four beautiful children. They're staying with me at the rectory, the rectory of the future. <laughs> yeah, so uh, delighted. They're wonderful, wonderful parents, and uh, it's so good for me to have company. It really is. You know, you hear the word cousin mentioned in, in the doctor of Jesus and brothers and sisters. In Aramaic, they had no word for cousin. And so your cousins were your brother and your sister. Isn't that right? Yeah. So that was Jesus's, well, Jesus's cousin uh, uh, in, in Nazareth. Now, I want to talk about uh, what happened to Jesus when he went home. He was rejected. He, he was really uh, thrown out of town. Uh, these, these were the kids with whom he grew up. Uh, he played with them. He went to the synagogue with them. And, uh, you know, the scholars tell us that little Nazareth uh, was a town of about 500 people. So everybody knew him from childhood. And they knew his mother Mary. They knew Joseph. They knew he was the carpenter. He was the village carpenter. And uh, you can just... Uh, taste, I think, the jealousy. I mean, wouldn't you think they'd say, hey, the Messiah is from our town. The Messiah is one of us. No. Where did this man get all this? What kind of wisdom has been given him? What mighty deeds are wrought by his hand? Is this not the carpenter? Let's put him down. And they took offense at him. They took offense at him. So, you know, Jesus is human and divine, but in his human nature, he must have been terribly hurt. He must have been wounded. Uh, um, it wasn't just a, a polite rejection. It was, it, it was pretty rude. It was, it was, uh, he, had to, he had to feel pain. Feel pain, you know? Uh, and uh, I want you to think back now. When is the first time in your life that somebody rejected you? Somebody didn't like you? Somebody was kind of stinking to you? Put you down? Didn't believe in you? Go back to your childhood. You know, uh, i got to tell you, the word innocent, and we have all these children in our and it's innocent. I hope they don't hear what I'm saying, but innocent means not Hurt yet. Let me repeat it. Not hurt yet. So as you go through life, it's a two-way street. We hurt each other. We hurt people and they hurt us. But uh, I can remember the first time that somebody didn't like me. And uh, actually, I was very blessed because I got through elementary school. I got through junior high school, and uh, I never was really hurt. But in the ninth grade, I can remember vividly to this day, I met a kid who didn't like me. And he didn't even know me. He didn't like me, and he was very rude and stinking to me. And when I came home, I said to my mother, I said, you know, I met a kid at school that's got real problems. And she said, what, what, what's the matter? I said, he doesn't like me. When I was in the ninth grade, I believed that if you didn't like me, you had problems. I still believe it. I still believe it. If you don't like me, you need some counseling. <laughs> How's that? That great? Yeah. So, but I can remember it now. But you go through life, and it's a two-way street. We hurt each other; they hurt us. What did Jesus do? He didn't nurse the hurt. Have you ever met somebody that? Uh, well, back in 1984, I got fired. This is 2015, and they're still nursing the hurt, and they're staying in the past. They live in the past. They keep bringing it up, what happened in 1984. Uh, Jesus didn't. He, he had to be terribly hurt. He, he, he was appalled at their lack of faith. But he left Nazareth, and I like to say he went to Lake Winnipesaukee. He went, he went to Capernaum on the beautiful Sea of Galilee, and that's where he sent his public ministry, teaching and preaching and healing. That's where he chose the fishermen as his apostles. 
to be state in Nazareth, that wouldn't have happened. And, and all these wonderful things happened at the Sea uh, at the sea of Galilee. So he moved on. He moved on. Uh, St. Paul. St. Paul, you know, uh, he, he was a genius. He, he was a linguist. He spoke Greek and Latin and Hebrew. He was a Roman citizen. He was cosmopolitan, highly educated, highly educated. He, was, he wasn't one of the fishermen. And he could have become proud. He, he accomplished more than all the 12 uh, original apostles put together. He could have become proud. But it says here, A thorn in the flesh was given me, an angel of Satan to beat me, to keep me from being elated. See, the hurts that he got kept him humble. And so they, they serve a purpose. They, it does serve a purpose to keep us, to keep us humble. When, when Paul went to Athens, you know, he struck out. He gave this sermon to the scholars, and he preached the resurrection. Never mentioned the cross. Never mentioned. He just preached the resurrection, and the, the Greek scholars laughed. Well, we'll have to come back and hear about this another day. But they laughed at him. And, and so he left Athens, and he went to Corinth, and he started a beautiful, flourishing church. So Jesus didn't stay in Nazareth and went to Capernaum to the Sea of Galilee. Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. See how you have to, don't live in the past. I think it's good theology. Live in the present. Now, you know, it isn't just Paul and Jesus who were rejected and not liked. Th these, are, these are just a few. Beethoven handled the violin awkwardly. His teacher called him hopeless as a composer. Because as a kid, Beethoven. Uh, Enrico Caruso, the great tenor, his parents wanted him to be an engineer, and his teacher told him he had no voice. Oh, okay, a great note. Walt Disney, I love this. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper. He was a cartoonist for a newspaper. He was fired because he had a lack of imagination. Walt Disney. And he went bankrupt twice before he started Disneyland. I told you this a few weeks ago. Thomas Edison had a hearing impairment, and he was called stupid and slow to learn. Albert Einstein, he couldn't talk until he was four years old, and he couldn't read until he was seven. And he thought he was quite slow. Albert Einstein. Winston Churchill flunked the sixth grade. Good for you, Winston. Flunked the sixth grade. Good for you. And, uh, you know, Babe Ruth, the great home run. How many how many home runs Babe made? Okay, here's the, here's the, here's the, uh, the sports news. 714. He struck out, folks, almost twice that. 1,330 times he struck out. He struck out. They, but the point is, after he struck out, he, he, he said, that's over. I'm going to hit a home run next time. I'm to play. You move on. You don't live in the past. I think that's so crucial. And... Uh, uh, forgive. Just forgive the people and ask forgiveness from the people whom you hurt. I honestly, I'm making this up. The, the kid that, that hurt me, I remember this so much. I sent a mass for him when I got ordained a priest. I really did. Just to get rid of them. Get rid of them. You know? Now, uh, I just want to close with talk about uh, being hurt and being rejected and, and not living in the past. Uh, I think on, on Independence Weekend, I guess Abraham Lincoln is considered the greatest president we ever had, Abraham Lincoln. And uh, this, this is his road to the White House, folks. He was born in 1809 in Kentucky in poverty. He didn't really get a formal education. He really didn't. Not much of an education at all. And in 1831, he failed in business. And he spent a good part of the rest of his life paying back that business debt. He was in debt most of his life. 
He ran for the Illinois legislature in 1832 and was rejected. He applied to law school. They didn't want him. Maybe he couldn't pay, I don't know. Then he tried business again in 1833 and he failed a second time. Oh, this is awful. Uh, in 1835, he's engaged to be married and he's madly in love and his fiance dies. He, he dies. And Abraham Lincoln has a nervous breakdown. And I read that he was in bed for six months, for six months after that. He just broke his heart. Nervous breakdown. But then, two years later, he ran for the speaker of the Illinois legislature and it was rejected. He ran for the elector, I don't know what that is, but he was rejected. Then he ran for the U.S. Congress in 1843 and was defeated. In 1846, he ran for Congress again and he won. And he went to Washington as a congressman from Illinois. But then two years later, in 1848, the people kicked him out of office. Kicked him out. Well, then in 1855, he ran for the Senate, the U.S. Senate. Now, he was defeated. In 1856, he ran for the Vice Presidency of the United States. Now, didn't make it. In 1858, he ran for the U.S. Senate again and was defeated again. In 1860, he ran for the presidency of the United States, and he won! And he won! Can you imagine that? It, can you imagine if he left the hurts and the defeats and the rejections of life holding him back? Can you imagine what our country would have been like without Abraham Lincoln? See? Let the past go. Forgive the past. The Irish have an expression I'll tell you about it after me. Let it go. And, and, uh, but then live in the present and look into uh, the future. But I do want to say about my cousins, and I, they, they're such good parents, it's good for a celibate priest to have family move into the rectory. It really is good. Uh, and to see, see how hard young parents work. And, and for young parents to say, well, we're going to go to St. Catherine's Exeter. That's a lot of work. And I appreciate it. I bow to all you parents. I really do. I appreciate the effort that you take your kids to church. It really is, uh, really is uh, uh, faith. And I know that Jesus is, is impressed by, by your faith. Well, I'm having a hard time here. We'll see. Okay, there we go. I need to, I need to help. Rick is going to help me. Rick is going to be our deacon. How many? Is it a year now? Two more years. I'm going to hang on for two.